Hey all, I'm Apurva and welcome back to Videsified. This is our part 2 of how to choose your university for studying in the USA. In this video, we are going to talk about how to decide the right university to attend when you have multiple admits. This is a very common scenario most of the students find themselves in during the application process. And hence we came up with our unique approach to make it easy for you all. So make sure to watch this video until the very end. So let's get started. But before that, please subscribe to our channel and also click the bell icon so that you will be notified every time we upload a new video. In our previous video, we discussed about how to shortlist the universities to apply and the research you should do while picking these colleges. This is an important step because you should be doing most of the research before the application process itself. And that research will be helpful in picking the right college for you. So if you haven't watched the first part already, go watch it first. By this point, let's assume you got all your test scores, applied to 6 to 8 universities across safe, moderate and ambitious categories and received multiple admits. Based on your earlier research, if you have a dream college or an admit that perfectly matches with your interest and budget and you got an admit from there, then it's all great. You can just go ahead with that college. But life is not that simple always. Many of the times you get multiple admits and you like the curriculum of one college but you might have got the scholarship in another college. Or one college has good ranking but the other college has a great location advantage etc etc. All these questions create a lot of confusion and you often find it difficult to decide the right college for you. If you are in that situation, then this video is for you. Let's talk about PhD admission first. If you are a PhD student with multiple admits, assuming that you already accounted for the program and research opportunities before you apply, at this stage you should be only comparing the tuition fee waiver and the number of years the stipend is offered to you. Because believe it or not, Financials are the most important part in a PhD admission. You will have to complete around 90 to 100 credits and spend around 5 to 6 years to complete your program. If you are not financially supported enough during this period, then it could be very difficult for you. The fee waiver and stipend are dependent on the availability of the funds in the department. So read the admit letter carefully to know whether you are offered a full fee waiver or partial and the duration of the stipend like whether it is for one year or five years, etc. For my case, one of the main reasons I chose Indiana University is because they offered me a full fee waiver and promised the stipend for five years, unlike some of the other admits I received. For the master's students, it is more complex than just financials. Unless you get a full fee waiver and an assistantship or something, the usual scholarships they offer don't make too much difference in the long term. So the following six things should be kept in mind while making the decision. We designed a rubric to help you all based on our experience so far. With this rubric, you can compare the colleges based on their merit and your interest which will in turn help you to make the final decision. The rubric has a total score of 100 points and we are going to allot each category a certain weightage based on their importance. The first one is the curriculum. We give this 30 points. Every college designs their program differently. The coursework they offer, the approach they take, capstone or project opportunities they provide, all these things matter in shaping up your skill set and profile which would help you in the career path. So visit their college website, go through the courses they are offering and get an understanding of how much you like that program. Some of the pointers you could look at are the specializations they are offering, understanding if the tools they are using are of industry standard or not, how many electives you can choose etc. Based on how much you like that program, you can give scores like 10 for good, 20 for very good and 30 for excellent. If it is not even good, then you probably shouldn't even consider that college. The second is the cost. We give this 30 points as well. Finding a college that fits well in your budget is very important. Trust me when I say this. If you have a huge education loan at the end of your degree, then it will limit your options. Like if you want to go back to your home country or a different country, or want to take a low paying but interesting job, you will have to think about the loan all the time. Showing the funds during the visa interview and actually paying the fees is whole another hassle. While finding out about the cost, don't just go with the I-20 amount because it is just an estimate and each college has their own method of estimation. Hence, to compare among universities, find out about the cost per credit, number of credits you have to complete for that program, any prerequisites you have to take, 
health insurance and any other costs. Most of the living expenses can be usually covered by the on-campus jobs but get a rough estimate and include them in your calculation. Reduce any scholarship amount you are offered in the admit letter. But don't just consider any assistantships or funding you may get in the future at this point. Once you get the final estimate of the expenses for that college, you can give like 30 points if it is less than your budget, 20 if it is approximately equal to your budget and 10 if it is more than your budget. Location and rankings are the next two things and we give them 10 points each. When you have a college that has a program you very much like and also in your budget, then the other things hardly matter. With job boards like LinkedIn, Glassdoor, Indeed, you can apply to companies all over the US from anywhere. And hence, it is your skill set and hard work that is going to get you a job more than anything else. With the rapidly changing hiring process, on-campus career fairs are not the only option for companies to hire fresh graduates. Like if the college location is known as a hub for that field, like Silicon Valley for computer science, Michigan for automobile industry, or New York for finance industry, then it would make some difference as you may get to know about many startup companies in that area. But apart from that, you can apply to any top or mid-level companies online. So 10 points if it is a hub, 5 if it has good opportunities, and 0 if it is a remote location. In terms of ranking, people usually talk a lot about brand value and the college ranking. But the rankings differ from website to website and their criteria like the infrastructure or public funding, research papers produced might not be the same as what you want from that college. Like if you're comparing between MIT versus Howard, then yes, the brand value does matter. But if your college is not an Ivy League college or a top college in your field, then I wouldn't just go by the rankings. So put your 10 points wisely here. 10 if you think it is the best college for that course, 5 if it is significantly better than your other options, and 0 if it is in the same range as others. The next 10 points are for opportunities, like the RATA opportunities, internships co-ops, or a funding opportunity where you work in a project during your program, or a great alumni network, opportunities for extra or co-curricular activities like conferences or technical events, these things will help you in finding a job and put you a step ahead among others when you graduate. It is not easy to get this information in the application process itself. But LinkedIn could be a good resource here. You can search for that college and find current and graduated students from that college and try to connect with them. You can ask them questions and try to find some of this information. Yorkit is another such great resource. Yorkit also has a very useful discussion sections in their app and website which are very active and engaging. These discussions are very informative and led by students for the students. You can find discussions based on various topics. There are already many existing posts that you can read through to get a fair idea about these topics. Yorkit's Facebook groups are also very popular with more than 160,000 members and you can easily find students from any college here and connect with them, get their reviews regarding the university, lifestyle, living expenses or job scenario in that college and these resources are completely free. Yorkit also has a premium counselling option if you are interested to find more information. The last but not the least thing is the familiarity. Like if you have a friend or a family member or a senior from your previous college is in the same department or the university. There is nothing like having someone to help you or guide you in a foreign country or some friend with whom you can go through all these difficulties together. I mean, these things will affect our decision at the end of the day. So why not consider them in the rubric itself? It is okay even if you don't know anyone from the colleges you are admitted to. Almost every college has an Indian Students Association these days and you can easily find them on Facebook and also join their WhatsApp groups for your intake in that college and start making friends. Like we said earlier, Yorkit's Facebook groups are also very helpful in this regard. So there is absolutely no need to worry. These weights are based on our personal choices and research. If your interests are slightly different than ours, then you can change these percentages a little to make a rubric of your own that works best for you. Then, you can score your colleges based on the pointers we discussed so far. And you have a winner. It is not as easy as it sounds. The more research you do, the better your result would be. So start your research today. So that's all we have for today. Hope this helps you in deciding the right college for you. We will come up with more videos about the next step soon. Please let us know all your questions in the comments box below. We will reply or make videos answering all your questions.
and please like share and subscribe to our channel until next time keep learning bye bye